Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new video on Seasons in Black Desert. So, as you may have heard, Black Desert is going to be implementing Seasons. Now, these Seasons are not going to be like actual Seasons, like Summer or Winter, as is currently going on in-game. Nor is it going to be like League of Legends Ranked Seasons. Instead, they're closer to Path of Exile or Diablo 3 Seasons, which are brand new special servers that everyone has to start fresh on, no connection to the current server, and with special rules that govern the server and how it works. So what we're looking at right now is the developer's note, translated from Korean, where they explain their goal for seasonal servers, as well as what they hope to accomplish and what they need to address before these can become a reality. So the main thing that they want to address with seasons is that new players currently have a massive delta or gap between them and experienced players. Experienced players have pen equipment, they have lots of TED equipment, billions of silver, uh, they have hundreds of thousands of different materials stocked up in their storages, they have work empires, they've grinded for CP, they've grinded for energy. Basically, they have it all, and the difference has become so big that new players are just too far behind to almost ever catch up unless they play an absurd amount of time every day. So these servers are one of the things that they are looking to address that problem with. Uh, and the way they want to address that problem with is by having this new server and having increased growth rate and enhancement rate be some of the rules that this new server has. So I'll quickly read uh, this a little bit here. New server specialized for limited time growth. Uh, in our announcement for seasons in Black Desert, uh, the road to Black Desert, we use the word season to describe the brand new season system. However, unfortunately, uh, players may be confused by this, so let's correct it. Uh, if we clearly reflect in the term that we wanted to achieve through the seasons, uh, what we want to achieve is likely to summarize as the term new server specialized for limited time growth. So rather than thinking of it as a season, it's better to think of it as a brand new server similar to Alvia, that is specialized for rapid growth of any character on that server. Uh, so, skipping back to me, the goal of the server is to have new players and experienced players alike be forced to, if they want to play on the server, create a new character that is divorced from all their other characters and all their finances on the other servers. So it doesn't matter if you've got uh, a huge worker empire and 100 billion silver worth of stuff in your storages and warehouse, once you come to the server, your storages and warehouse are empty, you have no other characters, you are a level one, whatever character you've created. So if you want to cultivate side characters, but you cannot use the existing Alvia server, these adventures can also play on the growth server, which is to say, experienced players, you can play on this server too. Uh, they're looking to have a fair start. So in the growth server, even those who've been playing for the first time, or those who've been playing for a while, you can all create one character and one character only. So don't uh, expect that you can uh, create a bunch of alts to take advantage of the server. You can only make one character, and that's the character that will be experienced in this hyper growth of the new server. And that character then gains access to the growth server. So on growth servers, you can earn exclusive equipment and exclusive black stones that can only be used by growth server characters. These items are not traded through the central market. Um, and in other words, on the growth server, everyone starts in the same condition, and the character will be nurtured only by the effort devoted uh, by you, the player, when playing on that growth server. As a result, no new adventure will be able to reach the highest level of equipment, of equipment in the short term that you are uh, allowed on the growth server. So, growth server de get, yeah, dedicated items is pretty much the big thing that this new season or server is uh, providing. The items and blackstones cannot be used by characters of the normal server, and items from normal servers are also not available on the growth servers. So what that means is that when the growth server ends, uh, the first big question is what is going to happen to the character and what is going to happen to the items. And this is a problem that Pearl Abyss is currently struggling to answer. Because the characters and equipment you have nurtured during this time will be converted to continue play on existing live servers. Uh, they won't be able to connect to the growth server anymore and can only be played on the existing servers. But uh, 
they're not sure exactly what to do. Equipment acquired from growth servers will be available on existing servers, so once it's brought over, it will be usable. Uh, however, whether the reinforcement phase, so whether it will be still enhanced to, say you enhance it all the way up to TET, whether it will still be TET or not, remains to be seen, um, as they're not really sure uh, how to go about this. Because uh, Pluralbis, uh, for all that we meme about them, aren't that stupid, and they realize that existing users, so players like us, will see the growth server as pretty much a uh, enhancement factory where they can jump on, do a bunch of work, and get a ton of high level enhanced gear. They can get tets, tries, if it's allowed on growth server they can get pens, and then bring that over to the live server and basically make billions of silver uh, for playing on a different server for a couple weeks. Um, secondly, they also want to make sure that when these items are brought over, that players that have continued to play on the normal servers don't feel like their work on the normal server is being trivialized and they're being punished for not playing on the growth server. Um, so separation from existing play, as mentioned earlier, the characters who were previously playing, like the obvious server, cannot access the growth server. So you, if you already have like a level 62 Dark Knight, you cannot put her on the, the growth server. You can't put your level 1 Kunoichi on it either. You have to make a brand new character. Um, in addition, the growth server is not only advantageous to foster new characters and sub-characters, but existing characters will be carefully balanced to better hunt on existing servers, so the growth servers don't have too big an advantage. Uh, the most important identity of Black Desert is an MMORPG. The passion, hard work, and time you put into the game is an important value that the Black Desert has to keep ahead of. We know that better than anyone. That's why we've been trying to protect it so far, and we will continue to do so in the future. We look forward to giving you guys a new server for a limited time. We will do our best to ensure that both new and returning adventurers, as well as existing adventurers, are always uh, both get to have fun while maintaining value uh, and the hard work and effort you've already done is not trivialized going forward. So that is uh, my attempt at interpreting this uh, Google Translate. But basically, they are going to create a brand new server where you have to create a brand new character. And this character will experience massive growth as well as brand new items and enhancement items that allow them to enhance items far more quickly and efficiently than you can do on live servers. Now, the main purpose of this server is to allow new players to catch up to existing players. However, they recognize that if they do this uh, sort of in a bad way, then existing players will just jump on this server and use it as a way to make a ton of money in a really short time. So that is kind of where we're at. Um, personally, I think this is a great idea. I've been advocating for pretty much years now, actually, for new ways to give new players a way to catch up to existing players. Seasons are an interesting way to do it because seasons aren't something you can really cut existing players out of. Existing players love seasons in games like Path of Exile and Diablo. Like I said, they are the most popular uh, time that the game has seen just because all the players come rushing back that have been playing for years and have gotten full max gear and uh, done all the PvP and kind of got burnt out of the game, come rushing back to enjoy a brand new server, uh, a fresh start on new character on equal footing with everyone, as well as the brand new rules. Now whether or not they're going to implement new rules for the seasonal servers beyond just the enhancement remains to be seen, but it's definitely a way to keep people interested and get people to come back to Black Desert to experience new content. For example, when Guardian releases here, if they release a new seasonal server along with her, a lot of people would jump on that server, play Guardian, and a lot of people would come back because it would allow them to play Guardian in an environment where they won't really be punished for not having played for weeks, months, or even years. Now, the other thing this addresses is that the Alia server has, over the last couple of years, become increasingly ineffective at uh, sort of protecting new players. The purpose of the Olivia server is generally supposed to be twofold. The first is that it's supposed to provide new players uh, with a fast way to level to catch up. And the second thing it's supposed to do is provide new players with a safe place, as well as returning players, with a safe place uh, where they can sort of get back into Black Desert without being exposed to the people wearing full tet or even a bunch of pen items. Uh, who will one-shot them and continue on their merry way. 
However, as Black Desert has aged, more and more returning players have super high level gear, and combat experience has become increasingly common, which means that the all of these servers' advantages have both been sort of nullified, and new players just don't have very much of an advantage by being on the obvious servers anymore. Seasons address that by forcing everyone to start anew, and taking all those players with their full TED and saying, hey, you have to leave that in your storage back in Valley or Heidel, uh, or on your character, and make a new character, where you'll be on equal footing, at least gear-wise. Obviously, experienced players will have a huge advantage knowledge-wise, and they'll probably shoot ahead, but new players will not be anywhere near as far behind as they currently are on are on live servers or on Alvia. So many of the concerns people have about this server uh, really center around, as they mentioned in this uh, letter, experienced players using it as a enhancement factory. So going to this uh, seasonal server and taking advantage of the increased enhancement rate to make awesome gear, bring it back over and make billions of silver or just enhance, uh, give themselves new gear to replace uh, the gear they're currently using. However, what a lot of people aren't taking sort of into account is that a new server means uh, a new economy. And a new economy means that we can ignore all of the inflation that has happened over the years in Black Desert. There's been a lot of inflation over the years in Black Desert. Um, all the Koi events, for example, sea monster hunting in its heyday, uh, imperial trading at the moment, uh, trading just at, in its and of itself over the years, T trillions and trillions of silver w worth of silver, I guess, <laughs> have uh, been injected into the economy in Black Desert that pretty much never leave because the silver sinks really aren't there. Sieges are another huge example. On a new server, none of this has happened, and prices will be pretty much back to normal. In addition, boss gear is not going to be floating around everywhere, and will be sort of returning to. Uh, sort of the first year or two in Black Desert, where getting boss gear was really difficult, basically pre-central market, when you had to camp the marketplace for days or weeks on end, uh, hoping that your pre-order would win, or that you could manage to snipe the Zarka, or the Giaths, or Muscans, or whatever went up, especially Beggs Gloves, uh, on the marketplace, and hope that you could snipe it before any other player could. Uh, what this means is that even if you have massively increased enhancement level, if you don't have the gear to enhance, well, that uh, sort of changes things. Now, they did mention that there will be new gear on the server uh, that does not clash with existing gear, which could mean that there is no boss gear as we know it. There's no traditional muskins, bags, uragons, gias, none of that. Uh, it could be just a brand new unified boss gear system that will be brought over, but that remains to be seen, and it's probably something they are currently considering for the limited server. So in the end, I'm sort of looking and approaching the server with a sort of cautious optimism. I'm excited because it's something I've been advocating for for a long time, the ability to for new players to quickly catch up with players that have been playing for years. Uh, obviously, they're not going to bridge the gap entirely. People are not going to be leaving the server with a full pen. Um, they're probably not even going to be leaving the server with full try. Like They'll probably be leaving with something like try boss gear duo accessories is probably where Pearl Abyss is probably aiming to put them out at. But it is at the very least a step forward in allowing new players to get into the game and have decent gear that won't get them one shot. I mean, they'll probably still get one shot by the people with pens, but that at least will allow them to survive in Node Wars against people with Tet. And I think it's a good step forward as well to bringing back returning players and getting them to play the game again and experience all that Black Desert has to offer since they last played. Anyways, let me know your thoughts below. What do you think about these seasons? Uh, do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a step forward? Do you think it's a huge step back and that Pearl Abyss is going to mess it up and really destroy the economy this time? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you liked it and have a good one. Happy New Year.